Hey, I'm Sith King. And I'm Sonic Sons. We're the Rambling Reviewers. And today we're looking at the latest episodes from Doctor Who, which is the first outing of the 12th Doctor, played by Peter Capaldi. Yeah, or if you go by Moffat's reckoning, like the 13th or 14th regeneration, but fuck yeah. that guy. So yeah, no, the, the 12th Doctor that anyone cares about, you know, the War Doctor lasted one episode, one special, moving on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then again, the same could be said about the 8th Doctor, so... <laughs> Well, whatever. Yeah. We're calling him the War Doctor because he doesn't fit into continuity and because the War Doctor is kind of the generally accepted name for this guy. For that guy. Not this guy involves Peter Capaldi playing the 12th Doctor. We're just going to keep calling him that. Okay. And okay. I like that he feels different, you know? We yeah. introduced him. And the two episodes we're reviewing, by the way, is uh, Deep Breath and Into the Dalek. And, he, you know, you realize why we do this regeneration thing. Because I love Matt Smith, but after a few years of him, you'd sort of figured out all his quirks. You knew his moves, how he would react in a certain situation. And now 12 comes along, and it's suddenly, oh, kind of new. I'm paying more attention to this guy all of a sudden. I don't know what he's up to. Yeah, it's uh, it's different. I don't think we've seen the real Peter Capaldi Doctor yet. He's still forming. Yeah. Uh, yes, it usually takes a few episodes to... Uh, for the Doctor character to get his feet under him, figure out what works right. and what doesn't. And for the writers to figure out what's the most interesting way to play him, you know, that, that could take this the still, whole season. Yeah. This still doesn't excuse the twin dilemma, mind you, but yes, that's that was unforgivable. The, <laughs> whenever, or the Sixth Doctor's outfit. <laughs> Look, the Sixth Doctor was great. Yes, there were some backstage problems, and the scripts kind of sucked in some cases, but whatever, we're on the Twelfth Doctor. <laughs> Jumping ahead there. Yeah. Uh, um, anyways, first episode is Deep Breath, and it was not a good first outing. I'm not saying it was you know, I, bad. I, I liked it, actually. I, I surprised was how much I liked it, because I would heard people say, ah, not so great. Um, I mean, I will say, so it starts off with a freaking T-Rex walking around in... in Victorian London. Victorian London and or the, Yorkshire. Or what, one of those towns. It could easily be not London, I wouldn't know, right? Well, like, we clearly saw we the... We see Big Ben or something? Yeah. Okay, I missed And it. Parliament. Okay. So, right, yeah. Right. But anyway, so, and immediately we see, oh boy, Madame Vastra. What do you mean, oh boy, Madame Vastra? Look, I liked her at first, but honestly, the characters are just window dressing, and I can pinpoint all of their characters in seconds allow me to give my impression of everything that they do the the victorian gang is as squeak calls them hello i'm madame vastra i'm i'm a lizard lady who's also a lesbian i it's my job to deliver exposition and be smarter and wiser than anyone else in the room hello i'm jenny i'm a i'm a victorian era Lesbian who's amazed at anything strange and weird, so I look up with fawning adoration at Ma at Madame Vostra and show exasperation when Strax does something stupid. Greetings, I am Strax, soldier of the Santaran Empire. Despite this, I'm the most hilariously incompetent member of this crew, and I am incapable of telling people's genders apart, despite the fact that I've been living with these people for years, and that should at least have been a priority for you if you're a fucking soldier. Did you just change your perspective midway through that sentence? No, that, I, I just <laughs> got angry, so I dropped it. Anyways, I am... Despite the fact that none of my companions approve of horrible ultraviolence, I will continue suggesting it because it is funny for the audience to watch me bumble and goof around, despite the fact that I should be able to solve most of the episode's problems in seconds with my massive laser cannon and combat skills. There, I have just summed up the Victorian gang. Every single scene with the Victorian gang feels like that to me. But he is funny. <laughs> I yeah, mean, like... It, look, if... Uh, I, I don't like comic relief characters. Mm. Okay, more specifically, I don't like comic relief characters whose sole point is to be comic relief. If you are a character and you can be funny, sure, but make him... Make people take him seriously. Young Justice, which we are going to review... Uh, Wally West, The Flash, was considered the comic relief of the group. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you understood that he was not an imbecile. He w he likes chemistry. He came up with some pretty good plans. He has a good... His heart's in the right place. You're basically saying he's well-rounded, is the point. And that Strax is not well-rounded. He kind of has his one shtick that he keeps doing. 
they all have the one shtick that they keep doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were Which, you know... Mm-hmm. Okay, Moffat, if you're going to keep using these... Honestly, I put, when I first met them, I pushed for them to get their own spinoff show. And that would be great. Give them their own show so they can develop as characters. Mm. You know, give them something. Look, Captain Jack Harkness was a great character. They gave him his own spinoff show. Uh, K-9 and Sarah Jane, they gave them two spinoff shows. Uh, uh, Alright, well, if, if we may counterpoint a little bit there, Jack Harkness seems to be swashbuckle, run around, shoot people, and be super sexy. The end. But he has deeper depths to him, which the stories go into. Hmm. We never find out Vostra or Jenny's backstory, other than, oh no, Jenny's parents were disapproving of you marrying a monster. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. If I wa- if I came home and said, "Mom, Dad, here's my new girlfriend. She's a xenomorph, uh, a chest burster." Um, yeah, I would freak the fuck out. My parents would disown me. Okay, might also try to kill her, but you know, because I think know, we're mixing metaphors a bit. Xenomorph, here, but eventually, uh... but we know nothing about their backstory. We know nothing of why uh, Madame Vostra is separated from the rest of the Silurians, or why she doesn't try to contact Silurian communities. We know nothing of uh, how Jenny and Madame Vostra met. That would be a cool episode. Uh, like, seeing how this this young girl who has some forbidden urges um, meets a strange woman who... Um, Turns out to be a lizard. Yeah. And but it, also inspires her. And, okay. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, it would be kind of uh, like the doctor meeting... It, It'd be kind of like uh, the episode Rose, where Rose is this ordinary girl. She goes around, but she's not that satisfied with her life. Suddenly, weird shit starts happening, and this crazy alien known as the Doctor bursts in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a cool episode. Okay, well, I liked it. Yeah, no, I liked it, too. Uh... But, uh, yeah, so basically all that's what I feel about the Victorian-era crew. Hmm. Don't get me wrong, Strax is my favorite of them, but that's mostly because he suggests hyperviolence to everything. <laughs> and I like hyperviolence! Yeah. I'm the kind of guy who will watch an episode of My Little Pony and say, you know what this could use? Artillery fire. <laughs> that is a, a, a problem for hmm. Doctor Who in general, though, isn't it? Because, like, a lot of these problems, if you think about it, like, should be able to be approached at least through a more militaristic means but it wouldn't fit the style of the show that's why when we first meet jack harkness eventually his laser pistol thingamajig runs out of bullets because like oh we could just shoot all the i am i are you my mummy people you know like we have to come up with excuses why we can't just shoot the bad guys every episode because then it would not be doctor who anymore if we did are you kidding <laughs> brigadier lethbridge stewart <laughs> brigadier <laughs> lethbridge stewart shot everything and nothing died that was oh. his point <laughs> uh battlefield he actually saved the world from an alien known as the ultimate destroyer by ah. shooting it with silver bullets okay once. that was awesome once most of the time it's chopped Heck. with the wings five rounds rapid never mind didn't work Heck, the episode Robot in the fourth Doctor's run, the Brigadier even lampshades this. Goes, Ugh, just once I'd like to meet an alien menace that wasn't immune to bullets. See, that's my point, though. So this is a symptom of a larger, you know, problem or, or whatever. Or a feature in another perspective, right? Yeah. Although, if you remember the how they took care of the Santarans in the Santaran stratagem, they went in... Okay, first the bullets didn't work, but that was because they used some techno babble to make sure that the bullets casing would expand or something, so yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't jam leave up. The gum, yeah. yeah, then they switched over to other bullets, and they and unit soldiers just walked through the Santarans. True, that was true. great. That was pretty cool. It was especially satisfying when the doctor goes, "No, you can't beat them with bullets. No, you can't beat them with bullets. You could almost." <laughs> I so sorely wanted the doctor to walk up to the through the whole base and see all these dead Santarans and the guy goes I'm sorry I'm sorry Mr. Doctor Man what was that you said about being immune to bullets I couldn't hear you over the sound of all of the Santaran dead <laughs> you're fired uh, yeah, yeah I'm okay okay but, so getting back around to this thing I agree I can, I can see the, the, the validity in your criticism about the Victorian gang being a one note crew uh, I can only say in my defense that I still like this particular note. I, I personally haven't gotten tired of them. But I'm, I can see why you might. Yeah. I, I like them. I'm just getting sick of them. Do something else with them. Yeah. I mean, I would say, I mean, this isn't 
too far outside the bounds you mentioned. But the whole speech that Madame Vostra gave with the veil and everything and how that relates to Clara relating to the doctor about his change of appearance and how that connects mm-hmm. with how other people judge her for her appearance and the veil and the this Yeah, that was that. actually something else that bugged me. What? She would... Uh, when the ep- okay, the episode begins. Um, uh, there's a guy who is yelling, "What the hell is that thing?" And it, the, it spits up the TARDIS because it's a T-Rex. Why else would it be here? You know, I have no idea what this even means anymore. I'm pretty sure that T-Rexes weren't big enough to swallow police boxes whole. I was wondering about that as I as I watched it. I'm like, I remember Jurassic Park. I don't think the T-Rexes are that big. Yeah, but uh, anyways, and he's like. <laughs> He laid an egg. Madame Foster looks at him. He looks at her and she says, It vomited up a blue <laughs> police box <laughs> through its mouth. Your grasp on biology is saddening. But here's the thing. She wasn't wearing a veil then. Yeah. Why is no one in Victorian London going, Hey, <laughs> why the hell are you green? You know some British. Why the hell are are you have scales? Why the hell are you have scales? That was almost <laughs> that, a sentence. Is that the new how do I shot web? <laughs> yeah. Why does no one give a fuck that the that uh, Strax yeah. has only three fingers and he lives with a woman who looks like a person had sex with a with a with a chameleon? <laughs> You could just say lizard and end your sentence a little faster. Yeah. But, okay, yeah, that, I guess, because she's known to be a lizard to that police guy, but you're right, there were other people on the street. My best defense is there was a freaking T-Rex to distract them, but, yeah, they should have done more to, like, let me talk to you aside for a moment where people can't see us or something. Um, uh. But, uh, anyway, so, what was I going to say? Oh, but the later bit, though, with the speech she gives to Clara was fit into a larger puzzle of how Clara relates to the Doctor. And yes, it does still consist of Madame Vostra being wise and stuff, but still not on the sidelines of the storyline, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I kind of like that. Uh, Even though it was was a little quick, the way this happened, where you remember when uh, 9 turned into 10... And Rose was like, gee, how do I relate to the doctor now? Does he still like me? And she they had, had that short in between that kind of helped with that a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I didn't actually see the short until, like, recently. but Yeah, it was a pretty good short. Um, yeah. I liked it. Um, but anyway, she had time to contemplate this. The doctor spent most of his time in a coma, and, and she was, you know, whatever, had some moments looking at him, and you could see it on her face. How do she, I deal she, with this? She even cried with her mom because she didn't know who the doctor was anymore. Right, right. And with Clara, it was rather quickly oh uh i guess you don't relate to him as well anymore uh but we're doing stuff in the meantime and now vostra is all mad at you and just a, a little too speedy you know didn't i didn't have time to appreciate what clara was feeling uh having said that i don't know exactly why it is but clara is more interesting to me now that she is with 12 than before when she was with 11 she wasn't trying to sleep with him well that's a good part of it actually yes yeah <laughs> but part, I... part of it also i think is the chemistry between the actors or, or, or the contrast between them or something um it's it's a little like and obviously not as good but it was a little like 10 and donna i feel except 12 is donna now <laughs> <laughs> and you know what i mean he's the more the more uh harsher or whatever uh and that was especially came up in that little conversation they had where they both meet and they've both been summoned by that same newspaper ad, right? And it's like, a normal person wants to meet up. How would they meet up? Well, they'd probably call you. Right. Who places a secret message that you have to decode in the newspaper? Probably an egomaniac. <laughs> well, I guess that's never going to change. Clara, I don't want you to change. <laughs> and then she was like, wait, what? And they went, now I will say, if ten, you could imagine Ten and Donna having a very similar conversation. Mm. And if they'd had it, there would have been a little bit more spark in the conversation, a little bit more chemistry. Well, that's not, be- not romantic chemistry, just chemistry, you know what I mean? Well, that's because Donna was played by Catherine Tate, who was known as an insult comedian. Yeah, yeah, she, she, she so she's used that to- very well. But even so, even though it wasn't as good, I did like this this back and forth between them. They didn't have with Eleven and, and Clara, you know. Uh, this is it becomes it gives me some more hope for you know Clara as as a companion. Okay. Um. Yeah. So. Uh. The first thing. 
Okay, so the episode begins, like I said, uh, the guys, Madame Vostra reveals herself or whatever. The doctor stumbles out of the box, and he's, um... Crazy? Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, there is precedence. Uh, in Time and the Ronnie, uh, the doctor was tricked by the Ronnie, a uh, rival Time Lord, into believing that she was his companion, except she wasn't. She was the bad guy of the episode, but whatever. So, you know, disorientation upon regeneration is something that has happened before. Yeah. And it's a fine thing. I mean, if, if we're going to go with a, um, a companion being there during the change, I think it's very good to do that, to do some sort of um, the Doctor is weird his first two episodes or something. Because it gives us the feeling that the companion has. We don't know who he is yet either, right? We're, we're still trying to get used to this also. We sympathize. And that's what they did with Rose... And he's in a coma, and then he's up, and he's like, what's he going to do now? We don't know. We don't know this guy yet. And now it's, he's wandering around, and he's like, oh, you two, you, the green one and the not green one. Or is it the other way around? It mustn't be presumptuous. You know? and, uh, and stuff it's like colors, that. so. <laughs> I think in Time Lords might have a different sense of visual acuity than humans, so. I yeah, who knows. But uh, <laughs> then he referred, to, he got Clara and Strax mixed up. Yep. <laughs> You're the same heights. <laughs> uh, I saw this great yeah. comic that was like, Okay, I need to find a way to keep you two apart. He reaches over and places name tags on them. <laughs> they have the wrong name tags on. <laughs> so Clara's wearing the Strax name tag and Strax is wearing the Clara name tag. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so they take him back to the, his, uh, to uh, their Victorian flat, or what do they call their houses house, in I London? Guess. Yeah, I think it's just a whole, whole house, not an apartment. Yeah, whatever. The, the, their house, and he's uh, sleeping, but not sleeping, and... He is talking in his sleep, yeah. They yeah. did that little thing tricking him to get to sleep. And, and he starts writing on everything for reasons. He's insane. I get it. Yeah. He, I, I imagine he was doing, like, the, you know, some, some time travel calculations that just happened to be bouncing through his brain, you know. Hmm. Uh, and that's when Kalara gets given the speech. Mm -hmm. And the doctor, because he's insane right now, climbs up onto the roof and he's listening. This is honestly my favorite part of the episode. Hmm. The doctor is translating out loud what the T-Rex is roaring. How the T-Rex is lonely. How it can't smell the smells of its past. How it's it wants to go home. It was this really cool scene. It made you want to learn what happens to the T-Rex. Well, you find out in three seconds because it explodes for no reason. <laughs> it was, I, 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 I like that moment, though, for being so dang subversive. Yeah, okay, that you, it was pretty funny. You thought it was going to be, and now we will bring the great beast to its homeland. And then, oh, God, it's in flames all of a sudden. God, I wouldn't do that to a person, much less a, <laughs> a whatever. Yeah. T-Rex. And then they run out to, to go see it. Uh, and they, they, there's these great lines, like, you know, who, who has the ability to do this? No, that's not the question. Why would someone want to kill a T-Rex? No, that's not the question. The question is, you know, a, a, a massive beast has been immolated in the midst of London. The question is... Have there been any similar murders? <laughs> Which is both crazy and actually very relevant, it you know, turns out. You know it would be great if someone said, well, there was a few months back this guy calling himself the Doctor killed the massive Cyber King <laughs> yeah. giant robot yeah. in, the, in the Thames, yeah. so sort of. Um, so that was interesting. I will remark, by the way, though, they, they had some small problems with the, watch my pronounce it correctly, cinematography. Yeah. <laughs> um, apparently they could not get, except for that one scene on the rooftop where it's way in the background, Apparently, they could not get people and the T-Rex in the same shot. Did you notice that? No, I didn't, but now it, I It do. was always back and forth. There was one time where the T-Rex's shadow is cast on the Doctor, but never the two of them in the flesh in the same shot. And it kind of bugged me. Apparently, like, the green screen didn't work or, you know, the, the lighting never worked out or something. Um, and a couple other little details on the chase towards the T-Rex, I thought, was slightly confusing who was where and stuff. Uh, but whatever, you know, we, we moved on. Then, then, then it got better. Uh, and so then we get into this the whole... Real the real plot of the episode, yeah. which is that there's an android who's existed for millions of years and is acting like a serial killer, killing people and taking parts of them that he needs to keep himself operational. Yeah, and his minions. But... Okay, I'd, I'd like to ask you something. Why would you include that when you have an episode about a T-Rex <laughs> rampaging through Victorian-era London? What part of that screamed boring to you? You know what? No, I, I bet I bet you is what happened. It didn't scream boring. It screamed expensive to produce. 
I bet you animating T-Rexes is hard on them, and they needed to kill it off quickly, otherwise they would, you know, blow through their budget. If you can't do something, if you don't have the resources or the budget, don't do it then, because it just distracts it. Uh, you know, it would, you know, you could have cut the T-Rex out of the entire story. You could, but then we wouldn't have had that cool moment where it goes into flames, and he says, have there been any similar murders? Like, I, I thought it was, you know, interesting enough that it, it fit. Uh, yeah. it, it doesn't directly fit, but it's sort of subvertive. Aha, we're changing it halfway through. I was okay with it. It felt like changing it halfway through to me, but that's yeah. just me because I'm an insatiable prick. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I did. Okay. I feel uh, it's best to state all things. Um, By the way, you're ugly. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, well, no, no, no one no. will know. It's a radio show. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, right up until we uh, show the uh, ALS oh, Ice no! Pocket Challenge. Oh, <laughs> no. Then you'll be both wet and ugly. (laughs) I'm kidding, I'm kidding, you ain't ugly. But, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, this just was weird, because both Clara and the Doctor receive secret messages in the newspaper to go to this restaurant where the robot has filled it up with um, the Hall of Presidents technology (laughs) to make it look like there's people eating. Yep. Except that they aren't. That was a cool moment. It was cool and it, creepy, it, it's, but... It's a very Doctor Who-ish thing to be like, wait a minute, this whole situation is a little weirder than you thought. You know, turns out they're robots, turns out something, whatever. Uh, I liked the moment of dawning horror for, like, the audience when they realized, wait, the Doctor didn't send this, and Clara didn't, didn't send, send this. this. Yeah. Who the hell sent this? <laughs> yeah. And then it turns out not even the robot sent it. I'm guessing it was Heaven Lady, whoever she is. Yeah, and then we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so... Uh, then suddenly they're sucked down into the basement by elevator couch. Yep. Uh, and, and they have shenanigans in the basement, and it's revealed that, hey, you know what, this makes sense. They're making a Jurassic Park joke. If you hold still, the T-Rex can't see you, and they were saying (laughs) the T-Rex optic nerve was good for them. (laughs) Oh, fuck, fuck a duck, what the fuck? (laughs) What? I don't know if it has specifically to do with the optic nerve there. No, they they mentioned the optic no, nerve. No, but I mean whether that okay, whether that specifically meant T Rexes can't see you when you stand still, because it's not as if the robots. Okay, but the breathing. Okay, whatever. Moving on. I can. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Well, let's see. They're not breathing, but they show every other sign of life. Well, you know, we kill them anyway. Why don't we just harvest them now? Why didn't that happen? Uh. Seriously, have these people never heard of corpse transfers? Or I mean, um. Uh, 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 Organ donation. <laughs> corpse donation. We'll just replace your whole body with this corpse. No, that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, so... It, 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 yeah, it, is it illogical? Yes. But it's, it is interesting when the enemy runs on weird logic that you can you know, use against him somehow. It, it flies into that Doctor Who, we win through cleverness, not through firepower ethos that the whole the show has always had, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, whatever. There's been so many instances of, you know... But the robot was just so stupidly insane in so many ways. It was like, yes, and now I shall harvest your organs. Yeah, because a robot that's been harvesting living beings for hundreds of years clearly cannot tell the difference between a Time Lord and a human. Well, he did need an optic nerve from a T-Rex. Maybe he wants something from a Time Lord, too. Yeah, point, but... Yeah. And, and, like, he's supposed to have been here since the dinosaurs went extinct. Before that, it's implied. Um, unless, you know, he got uh, optic tissue from, like, another instance of time going insane and sending T-Rexes to the future. I'm guessing not. I think it was meant to be... Really? Because London, London was built on the, the Cardiff Temporal Rift. Oh, wow. So, and you know, there's that pterodactyl flying around the Torchwood headquarters. Was it Cardiff was... built on the Tardiff Temporal Rift? What? I thought Cardiff was in London. I thought Cardiff was a separate city. Wow, we know nothing about Britain. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a separate city, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> the only thing I know about Britain is that you guys suck when fighting Virginia surveyors and farmers 200 years ago, <laughs> motherfuckers. America, fuck yeah. Oh, dear. All right. But uh, anyways, so um, my personal belief about this thing is that it's the remains of the okay there was an episode where there was a companion named adric super intelligent kid imagine wesley crusher before um star trek okay he was a companion of the fifth doctor 
at one point he sacrificed his life and crashed a Cybermen piloted spaceship into the Earth and was in fact the meteor that killed off the dinosaurs. So, this was a thing. Yeah, I remember. So my theory is that it's the this robot is the remains of the badly damaged remains of those Cybermen who tried to piece themselves together, and Cybermen are cyborgs. And they do have a thing for getting human parts, don't they? Yeah, so this is the remain Huh. So this is the remains of Adric and others that uh, that did that. Now, uh, that is a very this, cool this... idea, but they did mention, you remember the episode, The Girl in the Fire? Yeah. And the 51st century clockwork technology that had nothing to do with Cybermen? Yeah. And it said that this ship is the sister ship to that ship? No, I don't remember them yeah, saying he, that. Yeah, he mentioned that offhand. He, like, saw the name written somewhere. Oh, the sister ship of the something or something. And that was part of the theme where the Doctor feels he's repeating things he's done before. Like, I've seen that face before, which he has. That It was originally played, what's his name, from the Volcano episode, The Pires of Pompeii. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, so it is, it's actually those people. But I like your idea, because that fits very well with the, cyber, with the Cyberman ethos. And plus, as a regeneration episode, it helps connect the Doctor to this past. Yep, yep. Though, in this case, it's the other, another past, just the girl in the fire past. Hmm. Um, but, anyways, so, yeah, I like my idea better. But anyway, so the the villain finally like he screws up a whole bunch, and uh, the doctor chases him back to the restaurant, and he unveils his master plan: the fastest escape craft in the world, a hot air balloon made of human skin. Ah, uh, that was a disgusting thought. <laughs> he was what? Like, you know, I just looked at that and I was like, okay, I, I mean, you know, you're uh... a robot. <laughs> Couldn't you make like fabric or? <laughs> he, he's cloth? crazy. He or the, literally. Yeah. Anything other than that? <laughs> By the way, when they lifted off, it was not clear to me that the doctor and the robot had been taken up in the hot air balloon. I thought I thought the payload was something else. So for a second there, I was confused as to where they were. I thought they were still in the restaurant, and then then they they looked out from the height, and you're like, oh, they're in the thing. Okay, never mind. Um, oh, and Clara had that 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 bit earlier. I like this too. Uh, where he's interrogating her for information. Oh, that's redundant. The robot robot is interrogating her, and he says, I'll kill you if you don't tell me. And she's like, well, go ahead and kill me then, because if you kill me, I won't be able to tell you anything. <laughs> and you're like, hey, yeah, why doesn't that come up in every other interrogation scene in media ever? I mean, like, you know what I mean. Realistically, you'd get tortured or something. But still, like, if you kill me, I can't tell you what you want to know, right? You've just lost a bit of your bargaining power. Let me point this out to you. You know. uh, still, they could like threaten to kill other people into. Yeah, I'm that. You know, but I'm just saying, just it was it was a little bit of cleverness, which is slightly oddly introduced. They they seemed like they really wanted to flash back to her, you know, her days as a school teacher, but they had that one girl being like, "So do it then." And I thought you didn't need to put that flashback in there. Just have her figure it out on her own. Thanks, but okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. Then the doctor and him have a kind of confusing discussion about. You're so human now. You're, it was the opposite of what Obi Wan Kenobi said about Darth Vader. He's more machine now than man. No, no, he's more man now than machine. Yeah, which was interesting. I, I that was you. Know, it would have been boring if the Doctor just pushes him off. You know, all of a sudden. Instead, they talked. He, he offers him like a scotch or something, and and then they have this bit where you don't know how the robot dies at the end. I liked that. You didn't okay. know if the robot killed himself out of despair because he'll never reach paradise, which is an interesting motivation, by the way. He's not trying to take over the world. He's trying to get to the, quote, promised land. And then you don't know uh, the other option if the doctor, you know, is is uh, violent enough now that he can actually snap and kill someone if, if need be, you know. Uh, to be fair, violence just post-regeneration, um, not exactly unexpected from the Doctor. That's true. The That's twin true. dilemma I bring up a lot, but the Doctor tries to flat-up murder his companion for no other reason than he thinks she's an alien spy. And uh, in the Tenth Doctor's Regeneration episode, after he duels the Sycorax leader... Sycorax? Ziggorax, maybe? I don't know. It was... Are the Sycorax the, the, the spider people? No. That way, the spider people or the... The Rachnos. Rachnos. Yeah, it was the Sycorax. Okay. So the Sycorax leader, like, tries to kill the doctor, and uh, the doc doctor drops him off a fucking ship. So he's like, no second chances. That's the kind of man I am. Yeah. Though in that case, it was more the guy rushes at him, 
And, you know... Okay, that was more self-defense. More self-defense is what I'm saying, as opposed to this, which was more... I might just freaking kill you. And I like that little... The, the couple of lines. I, one of us is lying about our inherent programming. And I think we both know who it is. And he's in this never revealed, like, what they decided on. You know, who is clearly not what he says. Hmm. Um, well, the Doctor's never what he says he is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but is it... And I like I like this whole theme of the Doctor discovering himself. He, Talking to that hobo, or not really hobo, just a guy on the street, you know, but he's the hobo, and like, have you ever looked in a mirror before and thought, I've seen that face? Yeah? When? Every time I look in the mirror. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy's like just trying to get away from you. You feel bad for him, but you also feel sympathetic to the doctor because he's, you know, not in the good headspace right now. And 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 he says to the robot before the robot's death, uh, you know, you probably don't even know where you got that face anymore. Which, of course, he's talking about himself at the same time. He's talking about the robot and his questions of identity. And he's mentioned something about the broom. You're a broom, he says. You take a broom, you replace the handle. Then you replace the brush. Is it the same broom anymore? He's been replaced so many times. The doctor, he's replaced himself so many times. He's confused about his identity. Interesting. Interesting little touch, you know? You don't even know where I got... I don't even know where I got this face anymore. You regenerated. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, he... I solved the episode! <laughs> he got it from Pompeii. Personally, I, I, I didn't expect they were going to make... I, I, apparently, they're going to make a big deal about the face thing, because he mentions, it's like I'm trying to tell myself something, which could be a fine arc or something. I thought it was going to be like... For a few episodes, he's just curious. Where did I get that face? And then at one point, he goes, oh! And he throws the controls on the TARDIS. He goes back to ancient Rome after Pompeii. And he walks up to his other character, you know, playing both characters at the same time, and says, hey, why do I have your face? And the why guy, the fuck do you have my face? No, and the and guy, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> I think the guy, I was just going to have the guy just stares at him for a second. And the doctor goes... And second thought, that's a very strange way to start a conversation. Never mind! And then he just jumps back into the time vortex and, like, goes away. Does the rest of the episode. Honey, I've gone insane! <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was interesting. And then, so because so the, all the other robots die Phantom Menace style. Because yeah. we had to solve the plot somehow. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, right. and, and then anyway, so then suddenly the robot is in heaven dimension. Yep. Oh boy. Uh, I don't even know how this works. It's going to be stupid, I can tell. Just because Moffat's last few attempts at a story arc lasting over multiple episodes have not really impressed me that much. Well, I let's see. I mean, yeah. Um, the the original cracks in time and space line I, I was all right with. A little, just a little weird at the end, but okay. I, I was cool. And the whole doctor is going to get shot thing I liked. The cracks coming back the way they did in the 50th anniversary and his... No, and, you know, in, in the time of the Doctor, that was weird. Uh, uh, really? The, the way he was shot and then he has to pretend that he's not yeah. dead? That lasted for two episodes after that and then had no lasting repercussions. He went wait. around acting like he no, always no, 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 did. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I meant not him being quiet, not making himself quiet afterwards. I meant the lead up to it. And you knew he was going to die somehow, and how was he going to get out of it? And then we did the whole Area 52 and a pyramid or something, and the whole Time is Messed Up universe, and I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, the Time is Messed Up universe was pretty awesome. Yeah, see? It had pterodactyls in it. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Um, it had William Shakespeare on a Saturday anyway. morning talk show. <laughs> right. How is that not awesome? <laughs> uh, but, but there's a thing with Moffat. He does seem to have a problem with death. And people, the body count is so low in his stories compared to Russell T. Davies. And we demand more people getting killed. Yeah, well, yeah. That is not a thing you often That's hear. That's not a thing. I, I, I don't want violence for its own sake, but there has to be some gravitas, right? You know, and, and oh, this is real. And if you know, you're gonna this, exp this explains exactly the problem with the, the 50th anniversary. Right. I was. They couldn't to imagine that. the doctor in a position where he would kill off, like, billions of people. Yeah, except for you know. Him destroying the Rachnos ship by Russell dumping... Russell T. Davies. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm saying that there's examples in the show's history of this exact thing happening. Right. And Moffat right. is just ignoring them just so he can say, No, the Doctor gets to super special retcon so that none of it matters. Yeah. Because since the Time Lords and the Daleks survived, that means both... And there are some assholes in the Time Lords. That this, there's nothing to stop both sides from growing in power and launching the second last great time war. Except that the Time Lords are 
frozen like a painting and the weirdest thing that made no sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We are not going to let we, this go. We're, and we're, all right, but we can't rehash the whole thing. It'll take all day. Yeah, go uh, watch the review. But yeah, that. he does, like, when, how, the doctor under, under freaking Moffat has killed, like, Daleks. Uh, and of course the Daleks have killed a few, you know, enemies in general have killed a few bystanders, but there's not a lot of death. Um, and since we're doing two episodes for our review today, I'm going to go jump ahead a little bit into, um, into the Dalek and there's a girl who dies there. Right. And for a second, it's like, he's taking it really seriously. She's like, I'm going to do this heroic sacrifice. Here's my name. Do something awesome. Name it after me. And it was a dramatic moment. I thought, Oh, look, Moffat is finally doing death, like, as a real big deal. And then she winds up in heaven, and I was like, oh, he's gonna do this every episode, isn't he? It, every time you think it's a big dramatic death scene, it's like, no, wait, they're not really dead, because I can't bear it if someone we care about really dies. And that's... If you're gonna threaten the universe on a fairly regular basis, you have to establish some stakes. There has to be, like, sadness when people die once in a while. Now, when Moffat used to write episodes in the middle of Davy's run, it was a great contrast. In, he wrote um, the 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 blink, gas, blink. Nobody died. Excellent episode, and also the one with the gas. Actually, the, a lot, actually, several people died. Uh, well, okay, not by direct violence though. They went back in time and lived out their whole lives. It's not so bad, is it? Well, the depends. one of them has I mean, like a grandson I mean, who shows up later. Like she had a good life. She wrote down specifically, "I had a good life." Just so you know. Except for you know the lack of women's rights and but, the but dysentery. the way it was portrayed was it was okay. It was mysterious but not truly tragic. No right. air conditioning. Okay, but she was like, "I'm fine with that." Hey, for you that might be not that bad. For me, that is like being sent to the opposite of the heaven dimension. <laughs> So, anyway, Fuck. nobody, like, really dies in Blink. The the ficking villains are nice enough. They're actually described as the nicest psychopaths in the universe, remember? They, oh, they, yeah. Yeah, they send you back. And then he writes, he did write The Doctor Dances, didn't he? That two-parter. Yeah. In which, very explicitly, everyone lives, which was a wonderful ending. I love that. But it's better is a bit of variety amidst the otherwise normalcy of people dying every episode. Yeah, he also wrote The, uh, the Silence in the Library, where... Oh, wait, no one died because they were all copies stored inside of the wait, library's was, Microsoft Word computer files. And that files. was excellent, honestly. That was, what did the computer do? It saved them to the hard drive. And you're like, oh, that makes sense. And it linked to this whole thing. And we'd seen Donna in this weird universe and all that stuff. It works. But then when it's every single episode, it feels yeah. like all the time, almost nobody dies. I mean, okay, there was that one girl who became like a vampire and then got blown up. Okay, that's one. But... One girl who showed for five minutes and then exploded. Something like that, yeah. You know, it's... it's. Um, so now I, I had thought he was going to take it in a new direction there. And now it's, oh, wait, I guess if people die, they go to heaven. Okay, I'll grant you. In Into the Dock, there's another guy who dies first. Yeah. But it's less epic, it's less emotional, and he's the one that gets to stay dead. The one we really care about, she goes to heaven. <laughs> because Moffat cannot handle this, apparently. I mean, of course, really, what really is the most egregious example is, again, the 50th anniversary, where he brings back billions of people and undoes a very major plot point in, in major coup history. Yeah, That's where not really to mention, counts. bring again, brings back the Time Lord High Council, which was planning to go fuck the universe, and the Master! Yeah, yeah, and he brings back all of Amy's family, too, which was a cool enough thing by itself. The weird thing there was... She, then we never saw them again. Yeah, it's like they didn't matter. And you're like, shouldn't that be a big deal for Amy? Like, shouldn't we see a difference in her life or something? And just, no. All they had was this sort of, oh, I guess we're busy with our own life. That didn't even involve her family, really. Just general. We're busy with regular life. Do we want to keep traveling? Blah, blah, blue. Um, so that's a thing. Also, Moffat and sex. This comes up more often than it should, don't you think? The, it, let, let's just count the number wait, of... Wait, wait, Moffat and sex? Coming up more often than it should? Making me think of Moffat having sex? No! Yes! Yes, that comes up more <laughs> no. often than it should, which is at all. And then, okay, Amy is, uh, uh, the night before her wedding, tries to hump the Eleven after their first outing. They go to the, the, the Beast Below episode. Yeah. At the end of it, she's all over him. I'm like, you're about to get married, Amy. Like, I know you're grateful to be alive, but what the frick? Right? And, and there was a major thing of... Amy liking him versus Rory, and eventually she goes with Rory, but still, like, apparently the Doctor's really cool that way. And then uh, it was the Doctor and 
what's her name in the, the, the time of the doctor, that, that priest lady who has like a bed laid out for him already. And you're like, okay, um, that's a thing. Dude, he's not even that good looking. I, yeah, I, I don't even, you know what? I could, I could say, um, whatever. Everyone has their own opinions on what's a good looking or not. This is not an ugly guy, but when you bring up a theme too often, it gets stale, right? Uh, we already did a major romance arc with Rose, which was great. But then we had another Rose, and then Martha also loved the Doctor, and then Amy had a thing with the Doctor. And yay, then, Donna! Yay, Donna! I love that. And then Temple Lady, one with the Doctor, and there's someone else I'm forgetting, I'm sure, because I had like more examples in my head or something. But it, just, it comes up. Oh yeah, well they kept going about on about nudity in that episode too. Yeah, that was really kind of that stupid was and like weird. weird. And then in 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 then in Deep Breath, it's uh, Strax. Oh no, Clara, of course. Clara admitted that she fancied the Doctor when she was under the the Truth Field, right? And uh, that's so another this, part, of this, part of this yeah. is, uh, heck, uh, the Capaldi had to go on to Moffat about this. Yeah, I'm not flirting with this girl. She's like 30 years younger than me. Did he report that, like in an interview or something? Or yeah, just... pretty much. Oh, okay. So I liked that change. I liked that they were explicitly he's not going to be your boyfriend anymore. Thank you. Thank you. We, that's part of what makes Clara more interesting now. She's not just another, you know, romantic interest for the Doctor. Um, but even so, in that same episode, we had strax looking at clara naked in like a funny way like he scans her type it's for a health reason but still it's like oh you can put your clothes back on now i'm wearing my clothes and 10 seconds before that he watches her sexual fantasies live going through her subconscious and i'm like moffat really you need to let it go like i've i've had enough of the sex jokes in doctor who like save it for jack harkness maybe but not everyone else (laughs) you know like we just Get me to the episode, please. The rest of the story. Um, but anyway, so that's. I was glad though that they changed it up. I'm glad that uh, Clara, you know, had some, some development there, realizing how to relate to the Doctor. They go for fish and chips at the end, or, or just chips or something, or just coffee. Was it? They went for coffee. Um, and I liked the Eleven's cameo. That was a neat little idea for a transition. Yeah. And he's on the phone, and, and he says, you know, he's going to be real scared. Please be with him. And I like the ends of the conversation, and, and Twelve says. Well, what did you, you know, or what do you, what do you think? What did you say? Well, you should have been listening. Well, that was me talking. This is me listening. <laughs> I, I couldn't be bothered to listen in the moment, you know. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's, some good things there. That's deep breath. I wasn't really impressed. I don't know. That was okay. I, 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 it gave me some hope for the for this season. And then yeah. what came... gave me hope was Into the Dalek, Into which the I Dalek. initially read as Into the Dragon, which made me think <laughs> that this was going to be an awesome kung fu martial arts flick. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so Into the Dalek starts off better than perhaps any other episode of Doctor Who I've seen in a while. It's a girl in a space fighter flying away from hordes of other space fighters and dodging damage when suddenly a Dalek battle saucer shows up and starts chasing all of them. <laughs> and she's screaming and her brother's dying next to her and suddenly, boom, she's disappeared. And it's this super awesome scene. And she's like, She's vanished, and I was like, oh, god damn it, not the heaven dimension again. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering maybe if that and would then, go up. And then she looks up, and she's like, where am I? Where am I? And it's the doctor. He's holding, like, he's holding one of those things you get at Starbucks. And and he's got two coffees, and he's like, you want some coffee? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, take me to my rebel base. It's located here. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm not doing that. I love this scene just because it has the doctor lecturing someone who's holding him at gunpoint on how to hold, how to request that he go somewhere. <laughs> it, this is such a doctor thing to do. <laughs> Take me to these coordinates. No, 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 no. Try again. Take me to these coordinates. And he's doing this little motion with his hand. Please. <laughs> Okay, then! <laughs> and then he takes her there. Yeah, that was fun. I also liked how the, one of the next things we see is that Clara has a, a life outside of being a companion. Which is always nice to which see. Which is always nice. Now, of course, she originally you know, had a life outside of being a companion, too. She was his babysitter. Uh, I never thought the kids were that great actors. You know, which I know child actors hold a different standard. But still, in that episode where the kids are running around with the main crew the whole episode with the... The one with the Cybermen. I, I liked that Did you episode. you like that? I mean, I, I had some moments to it. The but Cybermen I, were cool. Okay, the Cybermen are cool. But, like, the ki- like I remember when they 
figure out that she is the doctor's companion through Google somehow. I know that Google is great, but I don't think you can say, it's like, Google, search all the historical pictures of the universe to see if anyone looks like my babysitter and her apparent boyfriend. And then, like, they have this whole collage. They've, like, come out of nowhere, but okay. Mm -hmm. And then when she reveals she's a time traveler, that one kid was like, time travel, that's so cool. And I'm like, kid, this is not an Xbox 360. It's freaking time travel. Like, another layer up, please. Like, kick Holy it up a few notches. Holy balls, this is awesome! You know, and, and a sense of confusion about it, too. Like, could that be real? Is this a hoax? Is this a show me quickly, you know. It, it Take just... me to next week so I can copy the math test answers. <laughs> yes. Uh, like I, I suddenly turned British in the middle of that sentence. I know. So many British people are going to listen to you and perhaps me at some point doing British accents. Like, they will, that's not how it works. And they will lynch us. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing we're on a different continent. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyways. So, but, the, now, but this time, this Clara is, is more well-rounded, I thought. She has yeah. a, uh, a different guy she's romantically interested in. They had a bit of chemistry. I liked him going alone to his... They did this like flashback thing and like oh and this there's this weird thing it's the only problem okay I'm gonna have other problems but yeah it's the biggest problem I have with this episode Moffat treats them like sh treats soldiers like shit in this episode uh kind of yeah he uh okay so the guy is teaching and he says any questions did you ever kill anyone in the war. Uh, well, I wore a uniform, and there were people who were shooting at me who weren't in uniform. I'll leave it at that. Did you ever kill any people who weren't in uniform? Kid, you're a dick. That kid may very well be a dick, but I can understand th bringing this up as a serious, like, matter and a story arc for that guy. That sometimes then, innocent people do get killed in war, and the people who kill them accidentally are ridden with guilt. And that can be a big deal. And I can yeah, understand and then, that. And then Carr was acting so flippant. Like, oh, you kill people and then you go cry. That was, yeah, that was a little too far. I'll give you yeah, that. Yeah, dude. D how would you like it if I walked up to a PTSD vet and I just started bad-mouthing what they did? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, will, yeah. I don't know how English culture works. I don't. For all I know, it's the same as Japanese culture. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I, now oh, I'm unit senpai oh. um, I'm going nuts but anyways <laughs> yeah uh, and then I mean granted we used to have a big problem in America with um, people just acting like shit towards the troops that well, came and, home and, from and Vietnam let, let's be fair. I don't know yeah. if that happened in England I don't know if this is the prevailing attitude in England and let's be fair too because Clara doesn't say oh shit you're a soldier I hate you she makes this one off-color remark, but then otherwise pursues him romantically. So she's not treating him like shit, but she was um, just just stupid in that one line. It was kind of weirdly yeah. stupid. Yeah, and okay, so we'll get back to this as we recap the episode. So then we cut back to the Doctor, who's on this space base that's for the resistance against the Daleks. Why are they a resistance move? I mean, it's the Daleks, yes, yeah. I get that, but... <laughs> I'd have liked to know, okay, we're resisting because we used to live in this galaxy in the year 50 billion or something, and the Daleks were trying to kill us all. Yeah. Just, just a little something A, a little like something that. might be nice, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, and the do doctor goes, oh, you're soldiers. You know, I don't have to act polite with you. You, you have guns, so you don't need to be polite. Which is pretty true to be honest yeah <laughs> so j take that line as it is like okay i, would, I, I would have thought, guns <laughs> yeah, okay, you have guns you, you don't need to be polite actually yeah you do need to be polite because you know you're shutting an exam oh fuck you <laughs> can i just say fuck you and move on okay okay and that they... should be a t-shirt put that up <laughs> can i just anyway uh so they find the patient who's been seeking a doctor or a medical attention a Dalek. Because this didn't end badly in the episode Dalek when we tried that. Well, yeah, that was less medicine and more, hey, let's do, let's, have, let's collect him because he's there. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, so, so they're imprisoning him and uh, they're trying to find medical attention for the Dalek. Um, because he hates all other Daleks and they're hoping which, to use him as a, a spy or a saboteur. Yeah. Except that, you know, we know Daleks never lie, except for all the fucking time. Though, to be honest, 
no Dalek has used this lie before, so it, it would so offend their, their sense of honor or something that it is weird that they would lie to that extent, you know? Yeah, so... Like, remember, remember when Daleks faced the Cybermen? They yeah. did not go, oh, let's make an alliance and then stab them in the back. Well, no, it yeah. was very upfront. We're going to kill you now. <laughs> well, duh, they didn't stab him in the back. They can't hold knives. They have a suction cup and a gun. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Shoot them in the back. Better. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So here's the plan. The doctor, a few soldiers, and Clara, who he's taken from the past, future, whatever... I think, I think she's in the past compared to them. Whatever. Yeah. But anyways, so takes them, gets shrunk down to like the size of, like, of an ant, gets stuck through the Dalek's eye stock, and they have to go into the Dalek and fix it from the inside. This is awesome! <laughs> this is everything that I've missed from Doctor Who. See, back in... Eleven's run, they had this way trying to make everything fantastic and magical. Fuck that. I don't want magic. I want science fiction. Pure, unadulterated, bullshit science fiction. <laughs> I want to yeah, see okay. laser guns, and I want to see shrink rays, and I want to see hyperdrives. It was, it was neat. It gave us a whole new environment to explore. I love the antibodies. Oh, yeah. The eyeballs just floating around. That's memorable. Oh, yeah. Know, those are zap cool. people to death and freaking... <laughs> The doctor feeds that guy a thing. I just eat that. Just, just trust me. It turns out to be a tracking device and not like which actual... doesn't come up again. It does. They follow him down the hallway for ten seconds. You know, and then they wind up in that place with all the goo. Remember? Uh, yeah. So it proves the doctor is not exactly nice. Well, I guess we already realized. Well, that, that but... guy was dead already, sort of a thing. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, but using someone's death to your own advantage is kind of cold. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Cold and calculated. Yeah, so, and they reveal that the reason that Daleks are evil is because uh, they have these memory banks up here. And these memory banks will uh, suppress any desire to be nice and any memories relating to yeah. desire to be nice. Now, I'll, I'll which. Give, yeah. I'll give him credit on this one line because he did say Daleks are born hating. This thing keeps them hating. So you're like, okay, so we could, we could still do the sort of always chaotic evil thing a little bit. But it, it does chip away at it, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it kind of... Except it... Always it, lawful. It contradicts, it contradicts what the Tenth Doctor said to the cult of Scaro in in the Cybermandalic thing, where uh, he said, you were genetically purged of any desire, any emotion that wasn't hatred. Yeah. And generally, he doesn't exaggerate when it comes to that. Yeah, it, it's... Um, I my, my worst fear... I don't think I'll go this far but is, you remember how he nerfed the silence? How Moffat nerfed the silence, I mean? Yeah, okay, they're these awesome villains that you can't even see without forgetting them instantly, and and, and they have lightning coming out of their hands. They're confessional priests. Yeah. Fuck you! Not only did that not make sense logically, but it also screwed up your, your our moral perspective. Because we had all the silence are evil. They're whole species. This happens a lot in fiction. Like, all the orcs are evil or all the something. Which just makes it kind of clear, you know, who we're fighting. Uh, and it's especially important when we issued anti-silence genocide in the Day of the Moon. Or, that was it called? The Something of the Moon? Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Um, which was a cool episode. And then it was like, wait, some of the silence are good. So potentially we killed some good guys in the midst of all that, you know, because some of them are confessional priests and they actually work with the doctor. And like, Moffat, don't mess with my moral compass that way. That that makes everything feel weird and evil. And I'm concerned. I don't, again, I don't really think I'll pursue this, but I would hate to see like, oh, wait, some of the Daleks are nice people too. And like, is sometimes I guess when we blow them up, we're blowing up nice people and like, that's not their role in the story. That just throws everything ever, off. If a Dalek is ever nice, it's only so that if a Dalek saves a life, it's only generally, unless, you know, some extenuating circumstances, like uh, the Dalek in Dalek with Rose, yeah. where it absorbs some of Rose's DNA. Yeah. Um, you know, unless there's extenuating circumstances, the only time that Daleks save lives is so that they can kill even more people than they saved later. Yep, pretty much. Uh... uh I mean, okay, so, th again, th there is precedent with the Dalek and Dalek. 
which I swear to goodness, I want to go back in time and rename that episode so I can stop saying the Dalek in Dalek because it sounds crazy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'd like to change it to something else so that like, it wasn't just like a blatant lo- spoiler. Well, that's true. But if it was going to be a spoiler, how about the lonely Dalek? Because that was the point. He was supposedly the only one left. Uh, or just the lonely one. There you go. Ooh, yeah. that, that would refer to the Dalek and the Doctor at the same time. Ooh, That'd be yeah. Kind of cool. Especially since the Doctor in that episode reveals his role in the Time War, so... Right, yeah. right. Ooh. We need to go back in time and do that now. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's some precedent there of, like, a lone Dalek being different from the Horde. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so they, they find out that it's because there's a reactor leak in the Dalek, which I thought that the Daleks post-Time War were powered by temporal energies from time travel... But I suppose Wait. having multiple power sources as backups well, is better. Well, yeah, they freaking the temporal source might be called a reactor. I mean, just because you use the word reactor doesn't mean it's nuclear powered, right? It could be well, a, something reactor, else reactor. Well, reactor generally means a place where something reacts. Suppose to the cause uh, power. No, but what's it? What are they called? The, uh, the particles that move faster than light. I know this. They tachyons. Were, tachy- are they reacting some tachyons together? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think that works, but uh, whatever. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so once they fix the Dalek, boom, suddenly he's evil he again and evil starts murdering and everyone. That was pretty dumb, honestly. I was like, just h- how easy would this be if they have a throwaway line about how, don't worry, we've, like, we, we, we got a, um, a welding torch or whatever, and we carve through the side and we cut some of the circuits leading to the gun. So don't worry, he won't be able to shoot us. <laughs> and then it turns out he has, like, you know, backup circuits or, or, or the antibodies show up and repair the circuits. That's one of the things they do yeah. is rebuild the circuit. So then it would be like, oh, the Dalek's waking up. Plus, Dalek's, Dalek oh. self-repair was also established in Dalek. Right. Okay. So anyway, so it would be, oh, uh, he's waking up. Don't worry, though. We disabled his weapon. And then he'd just be like, weapons, repaired. And then he starts shooting people. <laughs> then it would be okay the way it came out was like, you freaking morons! Did you not expect this would happen? These guys have one catchphrase. <laughs> Exterminate! Yeah. They literally view all other life forms in existence that aren't them as vermin. And sometimes not even that. Yeah, it, it, like they didn't take any precautions. It was it just felt silly. Like, how about another easy one? There's a bomb in that room that the guy's got his butt finger on the trigger to kill the Dalek if need be. And then somehow the bomb gets disabled, right? Again, a safety feature that then gets overridden makes the people look less stupid than not having a safety feature at all. But yeah. Uh, and then I was confused. The doctor, had he, he put his screwdriver up to this crack and fixed it. And then it was silent. And then the Dalek went evil. And I went, hey, doctor, just put your screwdriver back up to that one crack again <laughs> and break him, why don't you? <laughs> Like, you know what should have happened? Some antibodies swoop in and chase them out of the room. That would have helped. That would have made more sense. And then it was like, and he stands around all like, oh, what could I do? I can't do anything. And Clara has to snap him out of it. And, and the doctor goes, no, no, no. My least favorite part of this scene is where uh, the doctor's like kind of looking kind of smug. Where he's like, well, I knew it. I knew it. I told you the Daleks are all evil. And Clara goes, you don't know that. You're just generalizing. I wanted to reach through the TV and strangle her because, um, here's what the doctor should have said. I'm sorry, who here has been dealing with them for literally my entire life? Seriously, yeah. since my first incarnation, every version of me has had to deal with the Daleks in one way or the other. I fought a war that ravaged the universe that was retconned out of existence with the, with the Daleks. Trust me, I know more about the Daleks than you ever will, you stupid, stuck-up... Sp- sack of crap you know it would make more sense there anything uh, yeah but if he is not smug about it but he's more despairing and a sense of you know like because he's wondering who he is as a person right and now he may think oh crap i'm an idiot Mm -hmm. (laughs) i i've morphed into an idiot i can't save people and she snaps him out of that saying hey you've saved people in the past you can do it again that would make more sense it would um so then mm. Clara has to go to the memory banks and fix this thing. Okay, and this part also bugged me. <laughs> this is just going to be my catchphrase. This part bugged me! T-shirt. <laughs> but, okay, the doctor says, Okay, Clara, you're a school teacher from the 21st century. I want you to climb up to the top level of this alien death machine and poke around at a computer built by creatures not even remotely related to your species... 
which you totally know how to do because <laughs> and modify its memory. Yeah. Yeah, I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> Even if she was Stephen she had the brains of Stephen Hawking, she would not be able to do that. And she managed to do it kind of just by hitting things. So what you're telling me is that a blind gopher freaking out could have s- fixed the problem. Just shove that gopher in there and he, he wow, just randomly so- run into things and we could have solved the problem by sheer random fucking coincidence. So many t-shirt phrases today. I, I want to have that just like, so you're telling me a blind rabid gopher could have solved the problem. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt. Um, yeah, I, I did. I, for some reason, I liked kind of just the visual of her in the wires and everything. Just because it's different. Doctor Who normally has people running around in fairly open areas. You know, in a room, but like mm-hmm. enough room to run. Because we need to do yeah. lots of running. And this is, she's uh, in a cramped space and, and trying to figure things out was a, a slightly different and cool. It was slightly different. And there different. was that, that heroic sacrifice, which was cool, except for the part where she goes to heaven. But it was still cool in that one part. Yeah. Um, uh, so, anyways, next next up on the list... Um, the doctor is also trying to talk to the Dalek and go, Hey, you don't need to be evil. Look at me. I'm so old and I've seen so many beautiful things. Remember these beautiful things that I'm not actually reminding you of. Clara is just shutting down portions of I think he, of the... he, he connected some wires and I thought like, he's, is he like doing a psychic transfer through the wires or something to the Dalek? And he's like, yes. See, oh, you know what was really face palming about the whole thing? Huh. Um, they showed some of the Dalek's memories Except those weren't th- that Dalek's memories. Those were clips from the episode Dalek. Well, the first one was a clip of a security guard at at uh, Henry Staten's underground bunker thing getting shot by a Dalek. And then there was another one of the, uh, the uh, unit helicarrier getting shot down by the Daleks in uh, the stolen Earth. And That's all weird. of those Daleks were destroyed because the Dr. Donna and the Metacrisis Doctor set it up so that anything with Daleganium would resonate and explode. Yeah. So all of those Daleks died. Uh, you know what would be kind of cool? If or that... worse, that that battle was retcon from history, so I don't even know what's going on anymore. Uh, uh, what would be kind of cool is if the Daleks had a collective memory that, you know, so they remember each other's battles and so forth, and they learn better tactics that way. And so none of this was mentioned in the episode, but that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. And then eventually... I guess it was kind of established when Clara, the the other, you know... Yeah. The one before she was Clara wiped out all their memories. But yeah. I, that was just because they were in the same room, I thought. It was a little vague. Yeah, but it was all no, the Daleks. No, they, they mentioned something about collective memory, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, whatever. Though. But anyways, yeah. so... Then the doctor says, look at my memories of all the wonderful things. I see hatred for the Daleks. <laughs> and of course, that's the one part of the Dalek imp- imprints on. He's like, the doctor's like, oh, shit, no, 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 don't do that. No, must exterminate Daleks. And, and so Rusty, that's the name of this Dalek, starts going around and exterminating other Daleks. <laughs> Who have boarded the space station. Yeah. I'm torn. And that with... was a pretty cool, cool scene, the boarding scene. Yeah. Because these Daleks are just advancing like an unstoppable force. And they're just blowing away humans. Mm-hmm. That was it was pretty cool. And it was cool to see Rusty kill them all. Um, I was a little vague on the, you know, oh, no, no, no. Don't hate Daleks. Really? Doctor? And... That, that was kind of the whole That's reason. kind of the whole reason we're doing this. <laughs> I mean, I get it that he... He, he wants the Dalek to be even better than that, to be a sort of well-rounded individual who has interests besides hatred. But it was just a little unclear, you know. If you it's w- good enough, Doctor. You, that's what I'm saying here. Yeah, you're, yeah. This is good enough. You're okay now. Yeah, whatever. We, we can, can save their later. souls later <laughs> after he's killed all the other Daleks. <laughs> Daleks do not have souls. We removed those so we could fight the Dementors. <laughs> <laughs> We spend a lot of time in England. Why do you think we have no souls? Yeah. Exterminate the mentors. I, I once toyed with the idea of writing a Harry Potter fan fiction where Harry was a Whovian, like, secretly, and his Patronus was a Dalek. Whoa. <laughs> so, like, in the when when Sirius is about to get his soul sucked out by the Dementors in at the end of the third book, like, expect a Patronum! Exterminate! <laughs> 
That would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, it would. But anyway, so um, but yeah, the whole scene of of the Daleks just advancing relentlessly against the humans. Mm. I liked that. That just five to ten seconds they spent going through the eye stalk. And it got all really weird and mm-hmm. drawn out, and you weren't sure what this material was at all. That was cool. It was. It, it would have been kind of boring if they just opened a door and, like, walked into it, you know? Yeah, you'd be wondering why the heck they had used that weakness before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, lasers don't seem to ever work. Don't Has they? anyone noticed? Didn't they kill the, some people? What do you mean, the lasers? They, they were all using laser guns, but, you know, I... I don't know. Lasers don't seem to work against the Daleks. Cause I seem to recall uh, bullets managing to blind a few Daleks. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't happen this time around. Yeah. But uh, let's see. So once all this is over, um, who's the lady who they saved at the beginning of the episode? I don't know. Jack. Uh, her last name was Blue. Yeah. So, okay. Blue has lost her brother. She's been through an unbelievably traumatic experience. She watched people she knows and cared for for years get slaughtered by a Dalek army because she screwed up. So she asked the doctor, Please, let me come with you. He said, You're so brilliant and so amazing. If only you weren't a soldier. Fuck you, Moffat! <laughs> Fuck you, doctor! Hey, hey, um, you know, you know, it's... This seems out of character for the Doctor. And you want to know why? Mm. Maybe it's because his entire, almost his entire third run, um, he oh, worked shit. with Unit <laughs> as a consultant <laughs> to Unit, a group of soldiers. <laughs> he has been, and I quote, bros <laughs> with this guy, Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, he was bros with him pretty much up to his 11th run when he he said i have lots of friends he tries to call the briggs place only to find out that he died okay granted he wasn't the best of friends then but still you know and what about all the times that you were a soldier doctor what about all the times that you had to pick up a gun and defend gallifrey and your people and end the time war i think that part was the point actually again moffat hates the fact that the doctor has as to kill anyone so the doctor feels all guilty about ever having to kill anyone, and he doesn't want to be reminded of those traits. God damn it. And he's a, co- a companion. Now, I was going to say, like, you know, I was going to say what I just said, like, about, okay, he, he sees the girl's value, but she reminds him of his own dark side a bit, and that freaks him out. But you're right about Brigadier, and I hadn't thought of that. And that really does not make sense on second viewing. Or you realize, wait a minute. You loved the Brigadier as a, as a you know, he, you, he knew him longer than most of his companions. He did. Than all of his companions, really. Yeah. So, that is weird. That is, you know what's also weird, though, on the side, is why she's so quick to join up with him. Like, he, what, accomplished his mission with the Dalek, but also screwed it up and a bunch of people died. And then she kind of blames herself, but, you know, he's the one who fixed that crack. And mm. the thing suddenly started shooting people. Um, Please help me. These people are idiots. I want to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, if you, I can understand yeah. wanting to remove yourself from a very tense situation that's, you know, reminds you of previous tense situations. There's a reason why I stopped watching My Little Pony. I won't go into it further, but. Okay. I can understand wanting to get away, wanting to get away from all of this. But yeah, need, you're need, right. We need to establish that better if that's the case. If 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 she is clearly just super stressed all the time, kind of PTSD ish, and and her uncle was that guy, the commander, and can hardly even talk to him, and he says something like, "You're so withdrawn." She's like, "I can't stand being with soldiers all the time. It reminds me of the war and death. My brother just died." If there had been a conversation along those oh, lines, and other characters who who this offends me because i mean and yes i agree with you but mm. um we're not talking not soldiers ace the seventh doctor's most famous companion source of the ace test of doctor who companions namely if this care is this character capable of picking up a baseball bat and beating the hell out of a goddamn dalek then yes you are worthy to be in the tardis if not get the fuck out of the box because <laughs> Ace was awesome and a badass. Yes. Her hobby was making bombs. Yeah. And 
she beat up a Dalek with a baseball bat. This was a thing. You know, I actually read a fan fiction where Ace is viewed as one of the war- most terrible and power- terrifying and powerful terrifying and powerful warriors in the galaxy. She is known as Five Slayer, and aliens avoid Earth as much because Ace lives there as the Doctor and Unit and all the other stuff. Uh, you know what? If we ever make uh, Kristen Cross into a companion, I want to just graft that idea under her legacy eventually. Kristen Cross? Kristen Cross was my idea for a, a companion who was like a cross between Donna and Ace, remember? Oh, she, yeah. She was a former soldier herself and was all badass and everything. Yeah. Anyway. Um... Yeah, so it's more of this... Oh, uh, what about Captain Jack Harkness, who helped you save the world from the Master? Um, I mean, to be precise, though, these people generally don't qualify as soldiers. Ace was not a soldier. She was just right. a badass. So was Jack Harkness. But the Brigadier is very definitely a soldier, and that's where your, your case is strongest. Yeah. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah. And being maybe if we'd had... Strax! Strax was a soldier! Holy frick, we, uh, we talked to Strax just And you know yesterday. what's worse? You know what's worse? Uh, the Strax also plays into your Moffat hates people dying thing. Yeah. Because uh, Strax, despite the fact that he is, you know, a nurse and should know the signs of death, he just faints so that he can live with the Victorian gang. Sorry, faints? Wait, what? Okay, he was supposed to die originally in... Um, in uh, the episode, oh, which episode was in the his first episode, the one okay. where we introduced Madame Vostra and Jenny. Okay, uh, frankly, because I still think Strax is funny, I'll give that a pass. Well, yeah, yeah I know but... you're saying though, you had a other person, we didn't want him to die, so they didn't die. There was a de- the girl, the Blue's brother died, but he's kind of already dead when the episode begins. Yeah, and we don't like we have one reference of him later. She mentions my brother died. I'm not having a good day. Um, but not, not like a big deal too much. And again, the, I think Gretchen was her name, which is a big deal. And, oh, wait, she's not actually dead because we can't bear to kill anyone. Okay. I, I'll say again, though, for, for the people that want to jump on for criticizing Moffat about everything, because I've seen this sometimes on, like, Tumblr. One guy was at his essay about how he's supposedly homophobic. And I went, no. Yeah, that's kind of wrong. I, what, what was this, the badass FBI guy? Yeah, he was, was he was gay and marrying a black guy. Yeah, and, possibly and or, a, or Chinese or something. No, black. It was definitely black. It, it, Nixon mentioned. The oh word yeah, black. yeah. I remember it was interracial. Can remember which right. one. So that guy was not only a badass, but also deeply not stereotypical. Because if you had like a cool companion who talked like this, you might say that's stereotypical. Don't do that. No, but I he's would, gay I... and he's like the graveliest voice on the show. Hey, now it's not even a stereotype, let alone being portrayed negatively. I hate gay, stereotypically gay people for one reason. Okay, multitude of reasons, but the primary reason, the lisp. <laughs> Seriously, I, if you lisp around me, I will hate you. Okay, I do not hate people who have lisps. I was just saying in fiction... Oh, no, fiction, I don't hate the people who have lisps, I oh. just hate lisps. Oh, okay, okay, just, yeah. I was just saying in fiction, if it comes up like 100% of them have lisps, then that becomes a stereotype and... You know, we need to break some stereotypes now and then, why don't we? Anyway, so yeah, I don't want to jump on, like, Moffat is the the source of all evil or something. He's had a lot of cool ideas over his run. I can see why he has the show. But he does have some some flaws. And the more seasons go by, the more you can count up, hey, that's that flaw again. I remember that from the last five times it happened. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed. I, I personally think Moffat was best when he was writing under the direction of someone else. Under under the Davies run, you mean? Yeah. yeah. But now the inmates are running the asylum, so to speak. The asylum of the Daleks, so to speak. Oh. <laughs> the, oh. Uh... the biggest sin of that episode was they had the special weapons Dalek and they didn't use it. <laughs> the special de- weapons Dalek is they they didn't even. Yeah. It's basically a Dalek, except instead of a graspy the the suction cup and the gun stick, it's just a it's like a freaking cannon. <laughs> it was so stupidly silly and awesome. <laughs> Yeah. I wanted to see it just blow apart spaceships and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and for that matter, Moffat did this in that episode. You mentioned it, he did a strong swerve towards the, uh, Amy and Rory getting a divorce, which is like a big deal. And you're like, wow, what's well, what's up with this? And then over the course of one episode, all their marital problems are solved. And I was like, you're taking this too easy, Moffat. <laughs> like, give me give me some time for the character development there, and and what was going wrong with them, and. 
you know, you know some what time been great? to get you back together. Been great. Yeah. They um uh, the doctor takes him out for a few trips and is like, aren't you feeling together yet? And and finally they just decide, you know what, this isn't working. Yeah, that, this... would, that would be very sad to be honest. A lot of people are rooting for that romance, but yeah, yeah, I, I could I could see I was that. Rooting happening. for Amy to die. But you was... were rooting for Amy to die. I know. I, I know. always root for people to die. Yeah, you do. You do. Curse you, Moffat, for removing death. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, I, I, I'm i not saying, like, I'll only watch a show that has a certain body count or something, but it, it, it's somehow, it, the show needs to be coherent. And if I'm going to threaten the universe and feel like that's a big deal, I also need to feel like the death of one person is a big deal. And it, it rarely is under Moffat. It's either they don't die at all or the guy who died is someone nobody cared about. Okay. Hmm. Uh, so that is a thing. Indeed. So, I wasn't fond of Deep Breath. I really liked uh, Into the Dalek. Yeah, I like them both. I like Into the Dalek better, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, you know, interesting stuff to work with, and I look forward to the rest of the uh, season. Yeah, we'll we'll watch it, definitely. Oh, yeah. I think that's about it. Yep. So, anyways, I'm Sith King. And I'm Sonic Sons. We're signing off.